fall upon them and take their lives when they see him in his glory. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, 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 the battle be so great, uh, uh, the carnage will be so great uh, that the blood will go all the way to the horse's bit. Uh, uh, the Lord Jesus will defeat them. Then he's going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. Uh, he'll sit on the throne of David for a thousand years and you and I that are saved will rule and reign with him uh, at the end of that period uh, uh, and while that period's going on Satan will be bound for a thousand years in the bottomless pit uh, he'll be loosed uh, and he'll be loosed and he'll persuade uh, uh, folks that are born during that thousand year that had never been tempted to sin uh, he will uh, 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 certainly try to tempt them he'll re uh, have a final revolt uh, where in that final revolt He'll once again try to overthrow Christ, uh, and Christ will throw him. Uh, uh, he'll destroy him and throw him uh, uh, into the lake of fire, and hallelujah, we'll never deal with that booger again. huh? And then there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. And can I say, uh, the former heavens, for earth, the former earth will pass away. Uh, then there'll be the great white throne judgment in Revelation uh, chapter 20 when all the dead, wicked dead, will be brought before the Lord. Uh, they'll be judged for their sin. Uh, they'll be cast in the lake of fire. Revelation 21, there'll be a new heaven, new earth. Uh, that's when new Jerusalem comes into play. Uh, that'll be for the bride of Christ. That's where we'll live and rule and uh, we'll live with Him forevermore in the place called New Jerusalem. Uh, I said all that very rapidly to let you know our millennials don't believe in any of that. They believe in a general judgment. They believe the trump's going to sound and then we're all just going to go to heaven or those without God's going to go to hell. They, they believe at this general judgment that uh, uh, the Lord's going to separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep get to go to heaven and the goats go to hell. They do not believe in the millennial reign of Christ they do not believe in the rapture of the church. They do not believe in the great tribulation period. They try to explain it away, even though Isaiah 11 talks about a time when the lion will lay down with the lamb, where the child will play over the hole of the asp. And they try and explain away the millennial reign and that perfect time when the Prince of Peace rules and reigns on this earth. They try to explain away as the Garden of Eden. Well, Adam and Eve didn't have any children in the garden before they got cast out. Hmm? See, every time they make something up, then they have to make something else up to try and justify what they made up. But here's the whole thing. These seven seals are judgments of wrath. And they're not going to be released on this earth until the church is out of here. Hmm? So how in the world do they deal with Revelation chapter 5? Here's how. They don't. They have the mindset that Revelation's too hard for any of us to understand, so don't read it. Well, isn't that what the Catholics did with the Bible? You can't, you can't understand it, so don't read it. Hmm. That's nowhere in my notes, but that's what you got, okay? It's a seven-sealed book. Notice, if you will, the strong angel in verse number 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Now can I say, the Lord didn't just take any angel. He took a strong angel. This would be either a cherubim or an archangel. This is the elite of the elite crying with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the seals thereof? We see the sealed book. We see the strong angel. Now notice the sobbing subject. Look at verse number 3. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, this is John speaking, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. We see the sobbing subject. But then we find a soothing message. Look in verse number 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. He gets a soothing message. One of the elders, who do you say who who was that? That's one of the apostles. One of the apostles looks at him and says, Hey, dry it up. There is one worthy. Uh, one has prevailed. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of Jesse. Uh, 
He has prevailed. Aren't you glad uh, he prevailed on Calvary? Aren't you glad that he prevailed over the tomb? Aren't you glad one is able to open the book? Had he not prevailed, there had been no hope for any of us. And then we see the seven attributes. Look in verse number 6. Behold, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, in the midst of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. Well, we know who that is. You've got the right Bible. That's capitalized, the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus. Uh, it says, as it had been slain, and he was on Calvary, huh? having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Now, I'll get into them sevens in a minute, but you've got to understand, John is, is, is inspired to pin down these words based on what John's intellect could withhold. Can you imagine when John was caught up from 2,000 years ago into glory to see all things? How does John explain an airplane? or an automobile, or a tank, or mass nuclear explosions, or viruses. Uh, some of the things that he may be describing throughout the book of Revelation may look like uh, uh, some kind of scorpion coming out of the earth that stings and kills people, but have you ever seen things under a microscope? A virus under the microscope is pretty scary looking. What I'm saying is there's a lot of this stuff even you and I who live in 2023 can't get a grip on. So when he says he sees a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, and he's writing the best that the Holy Ghost inspires him to write to his intellect. You have to understand a lot of things in the Bible are pictures. Now what is these seven things? The seven horns shows his omnipotence. Anytime you find the horn in the Bible, it deals with power. He's got seven of them, perfection. He's omnipotent. Uh, he has all power. Uh, he is almighty. Uh, he is uh, God himself. Uh, we see the seven horns. We see the seven eyes. That shows his omniscience. That's, he, he's everywhere all the time and knows everything. Hmm? He's omniscient. Nothing has ever revealed, been revealed to God. He knows it all. Matter of fact, he's revealing to John 2,000 years ago things that's going to be happening right now. Hmm? And uh, uh, the seven spirits shows his omnipresence. Hmm? Look what it says. In the seven spirits, uh, 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 which are uh, in the seven eyes, which are the seven spirits. These seven spirits shows that God's present all the time, everywhere, sees everything, knows everything. Now, I, I've heard people try to explain what are the seven spirits of God, like it's something mysterious. Well, Isaiah tells us in Isaiah eleven two. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, talking about the Lamb, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and, and of the fear of the Lord. So we find the seven spirits are in Isaiah 11 too. And Jesus had all of them. I'm interested tonight in verse number 6, where it says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a Lamb. I want to preach with God's help for just a minute on he stood up. Uh, here John's all tore up. He's weeping. He's upset. No man's been found worthy in heaven, in the earth, or under the earth uh, in order to open this sealed book. Uh, he don't know what's in this sealed book, uh, 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 but he knows that it's so important that nobody... Uh, even the father sitting on the thrones uh, uh, going to open it uh, and he's upset and then he gets a message from one of the elders hey uh, the lamb hath prevailed uh, and he gets to look and in the midst of the throne of God uh, there stands the lamb uh, can I say he stood up uh, 
Wasn't the first time he stood up, friend. Uh, won't be the last time he stands up. Uh, hey, uh, I'm glad we serve a lamb uh, who's a stand-up kind of lamb. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, he's always uh, at the ready to stand up for you and I. Can I say, uh, he stood up for a sentence uh, long ago. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Revelation 13 and 8, uh, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him uh, whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb, uh, slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings uh, in heavenly places in Christ, uh, according as he hath chosen us in him uh, before the foundation of the world, uh, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Uh, friend, long before uh, God ever spoke the universe in existence, uh, long before God ever hung the stars in place, uh, long before God ever reached down and scooped up dirt uh, and made it uh, in his own image uh, and breathed in it the breath of life and man became a living soul uh, long before there was a garden uh, long before there was man and woman uh, long before uh, you and I was ever even on the mind of God, uh, God thought uh, we're going to make man uh, and we're going to make him perfect uh, but he's going to sin uh, uh, and we've got to make a way to redeem him uh, and the lamb stood up uh, and he stood up for a sentence uh, he said I'll take the death sentence uh, I'll be the one that dies uh, he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world uh, and it was chosen by God uh, before the foundation of the world uh, that we would be saved in him hallelujah don't get caught up in that word predestination. God never predestinated some to die and go to hell and some to die and go to heaven. No. What was predestinated uh, is that the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, would die for our sins. Uh, and if anybody would be saved, they'd be saved in Him, my dear friends. Uh, uh, he stood up for a sentence. Hmm? God didn't have to take any volunteers. God didn't have to look over to Calvary, look for a lamb. Uh, God said, we're going to need a lamb. And he said, that's me. He stood up for a sentence. Uh, can I say this? He stood up for sinners. I bless the Lord. Uh, hey, uh, listen, let me just say this. Uh, there's some sinners I wouldn't stand up for. There are some sinners, I say, they got, they got what was coming to them. Uh, there are some sinners, I say, uh, hey, if they did that to that person or that child, let them fry. Uh, but can I say, uh, every filthy, vile sinner, uh, everyone uh, that would cause uh, uh, God to puke at the thought of them, uh, uh, the Lamb stood up for them. Uh, he died for sinners, friend. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Luke 5, 32, uh, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh, five, uh, Romans 5, 8, but God committed his love toward us uh, and that we were, while we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us. Uh, he died for the drunks. He died for the fornicators. Uh, he died for the prostitutes. Uh, he died for the homosexuals. Uh, he died for the transgenders. Uh, he died for church people. Uh, he died for every sinner. Uh, and friends, from a white lie uh, to the most vilest murder you ever seen, uh, it all was guilty before God. Uh, and he needed a Savior to die for him. Uh, hey, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 1.15, uh, this is a faithful saying uh, and worthy of all acceptation uh, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners uh, of whom I am chief. Uh, 1 Peter 3.18 uh, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins uh, the just for the unjust uh, that he might bring us to God uh, being put to death in the flesh uh, but quickened by the Spirit. Uh, I want to tell you friends uh, when they come looking for him in the garden he didn't back down. Uh, when they called out his name, he said, I am. Uh, and they arrested him. Uh, and they took him uh, before Pilate. Uh, then they took him to the hall praetorium. Uh, and they beat him beyond recognition. Uh, and they brought him before Pilate again. Uh, and Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Uh, well, I'm telling you tonight, uh, he didn't have to. Uh, but he stood there and he took the beating. Uh, he took the kangaroo court uh, and he took his cross uh, and he was suspended between heaven and earth uh, and he stood up for you and I. Uh, 
we should be dead in hell tonight. But I'm not going to hell because the Lamb stood for sinners. He stood for a sentence. He stood for sinners. Can I say this? He stood at the sepulcher. They thought he was dead and gone. You know what the Bible says in Matthew 28, 6. The angel said, He is not here for he's risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Now if I read the Bible right, he was laying in the tomb. But then he stood up. He got up under his own power. Rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He said before he went to the tomb in John 10, verse 17, uh, Therefore doth my Father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down on myself. Uh, I have the power to lay it down, uh, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. He stood up at the sepulcher under his own power. Huh? Listen, there's some people believe God sent the angels, rolled the stone away. Some believe the earthquake rolled the stone away. Can I say all the Lord had to do was say move and the stone went away, right? Huh? He had power over it all. God's the one that made the stone. He's the one that knew that that little carved out uh, a little piece of place on the side of the hill was going to be where they laid him. Uh, he grew the tree that would become the cross. Uh, he knew it all. And yet, at the right appointed time, he stood up at the sepulcher. Huh? What a blessing. Hmm? He stood up. I'm talking about he stood up. Can I say this? Uh, he stood up for Stephen. You know what the Bible says. Colossians 3, 3, if, any, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. We know there are several, I think there's five verses that mention about him sitting at the right hand of God. Hmm? I'm talking about after resurrection. But then we also know in Acts chapter 7, Stephen's being stoned. He's preached to them Jews. They didn't like it. He's been stoned. Kind of like when I was giving announcements, I was looking for some rocks coming my way, huh? Stephen's are preaching they're bouncing rocks off his head you can believe what you want to I don't believe he fell a stone I don't believe he fell to any of them because the Bible said he, he got down and he fell asleep you don't fall asleep with rocks bouncing off your head mm. you might get knocked a little loopy but you don't fall asleep no, he didn't even get knocked loopy but that's what it says in Acts 7 55 but he Stephen being full of the Holy Ghost by the way when you get full of the Holy Ghost you can take anything the world throws at you huh but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Colossians says he's sitting at the right hand of God. Stephen said, I saw him standing at the right hand of God. Why? He stood up for Stephen. Uh, uh, the Bible says, uh, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'd go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, listen, uh, uh, it's not the angel who receives us at the gate. Uh, it's not Peter there checking a checklist on the road called up yonder. Uh, hey, Stephen's about ready to cross over. Uh, and the Lord himself uh, stood up uh, to receive Stephen in the glory. Uh, and he'll do the same for you and I when we cross over. Huh? As he stood up for Stephen. Huh? What a blessing. What a blessing. Now listen. I don't know when it'll be your time, when it'll be my time. But the Lord has dying grace for us. Now, I don't know how Stephen can be outside Jerusalem preaching to a bunch of uncircumcised of heart, stiff-necked Jews, and that's what the Bible calls them. And he's preaching to them, and they start gnashing on him with his teeth, with their teeth, and they throw their coats over on a man named Saul, Saul of Tarsus, uh, who's the one that gave the order. Uh, and Stephen's paraded outside of town, and they all pick up rocks, and they begin to stone him. Uh, and in the midst of all that, how this man uh, uh, can look uh, uh, past the clouds, uh, past the galaxy, uh, and see all the way up to the third heaven uh, and the sides of the north. Uh, I don't know how that happened. Uh, only thing I can know, uh, I've read books after books and heard accounts uh, about a dying saint about ready 
to cross over uh, and look at their uh, uh, family and say, can you see him? Uh, can you see him? He's coming to get me. Uh, and they're thinking, oh, mom's just out of her mind. Uh, she's never been any more in her mind than she is right there. Uh, hey, there's something God has for his children. Uh, when he stands up to get them, uh, he's got a grace for them. Uh, and the sting of death has been removed. Uh, and they go to sleep in this world and wake up in his arms over there. Uh, so how's that happen? All I can say is it's a blessing to be saved. That's all I can tell you. Uh, all I know is the Lamb stands up. I bless His holy name. Uh, I've got a book. Several of you have borrowed it over time. I think I got it in my office. It's the last words of saints and sinners. Lost people and saved people die differently. Some of the greatest heretics that have ever been known to man that fought all against the uh, uh, the grace of God all they can when it comes down to their dying day they're, 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 what comes out of their mouths friend uh, it and what came out of Stephen's mouth man they f start feeling the flames of hell uh, they start seeing uh, uh, hell open up ready to receive them uh, and they uh, uh, my dear uh, are fearful the day they was born but a child of God <laughs> they go out in the glory there's a difference there's a difference. Some of the biggest, baddest infidels ever lived, they changed their tune when, they, when hell got a grip on them. Uh, by the way, to combat that nowadays, they have something called hospice, and they put people on morphine so they don't have to listen to them scream when they're about ready to die and go to hell. Yeah, that didn't cost you anything. You say, don't you believe in decency? Oh, I believe in decency. But there's nothing more decent than the grace of God. Mm. I'm just saying people die different. Mm. Oh, you're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Uh, Say, so, well, I, 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 we put mom in the hospice and they gave her morphine. She went out and that was good. Well, hey, hallelujah. She didn't suffer. But I'm here to tell you that people die different. And one reason that they do want to dope up because some people are wicked and on their way to hell and they don't want to hear them screaming all across the hospitals, huh? They try to make you comfortable in the hospital because there's people like me don't like to be in there. And if I heard people screaming all over the place because they was about ready to die and go to hell, I promise you I wouldn't stay there, huh? And they wouldn't get all that money from me, huh? And Miss Nett said that last little jot in the hospital is going to end up costing about $100,000. Hallelujah for insurance, huh? Or I could be illegal and let uh, you all pay for it. No, nah, but that's holy. Uh, the other night when we took her to the hospital, uh, we was the only English-speaking people in there. That's all I'm going to say. Mm. Uh, that's true. ER filled up for it. And I'm thinking, how much is this costing us? That's what I'm thinking. Uh. You say, Brother Doug, you shouldn't be that way. I'm just telling it like it is, keeping it real. I will say this. Number one, when I found out we had insurance. And number two, when I found out she'd been working there 34 years, we got carte blanche after that. Huh? They was apologizing that we had to wait. Hmm? What a blessing, huh? Anyway, I don't know where that came from. That was for you, Caitlin. There you go. Huh? I'm serious. I'm sick and tired of welfare. Huh? Listen, I'm all for somebody that is really suffering and can't help themselves. I'm all for that. I'm all for people that paid into Social Security all their life. They ought to have that benefit when they retire. I'm all for taking care of our veterans who fought for our country and our freedoms. We ought to take care of them. There's nothing more de disgraceful in America than a veteran uh, that is homeless and can't afford to feed themselves. Hmm? There's nothing more disgraceful. I'm all for taking care of people that really need to be taken care of. But people that have no desire to work, the Bible said if man doesn't work, shouldn't eat. And we shouldn't have to take care of them. And Joe Biden can put that in his pipe and smoke it. I don't care. Uh, they don't deserve it. And I, I'm on that. I saw yesterday in Panama today, there's a line miles long, miles long, of 20 to 35 old Chinese men waiting to come across our southern border. 
Why are Chinese men wanting to come here? Several people are suspectful of the fact that they're part of the Chinese military. They've been trained in military ops. Mm, I'm sure China and all that farmland they bought is not grown crops. Who knows what's sitting there waiting on these Chinese guys. I'm just telling you, America's been being invaded for years. And America that we grew up on is no longer the America we're living in. Mm. Are you paying attention? Are you looking what's going on in this country? This country is bankrupt. Do you realize in the last three weeks, Russia, India, and China no longer base their currency on the dollar? You know what that does? That means our dollar's worthless. Those are the largest economies in the world. They're no longer basing it on our dollar. Do you understand that? Do you understand that China and Russia are siding with one another and they're about ready to take all and nobody in this world takes America serious anymore all America's worried about is trying to keep Trump from running next time I don't even know if he's really going to run but the truth of the matter is Trump can't save America the only one who can save America is Jesus Christ and most people got their head buried and say, as long as they can still go to McDonald's, as long as they can still put gas in their cars, as long as they can still watch their sport teams, uh, as long as they can still go where they think they're allowed to go and nobody bothers them, they could care less who's running this country. You say, who's running it? The devil. Who's ever running the Illuminati? And that's a whole other message. Say, what is that? That's the secret organization. You don't become president unless you're part of it. Hmm? Uh, and by the way for all you that think Trump's the Savior I mean Baptist Church thinks he's the Savior you do realize he's had three wives he's a known fornicator you do realize that he is not a godly man uh, uh, but yet I know Baptists that think that he is he's the second coming of the Lord huh They'd let them speak in their pulpit. But that said, I still voted for him because he's better than the other option. Uh, if Hillary would have got him, we'd already seen the rapture, huh? And I wouldn't put too much stock in Trump because I don't know if we're going to make it to that election. The Lord may come back tonight. Can I say, he's going to stand up one day in the sky. Hmm? 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, For the Lord himself shall descend. That means he got up from the throne. He shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. By the way, that is not his second coming. We rise to meet him in the air. He don't come back till he comes back to stop the battle at Armageddon. There's a difference between us going up and him coming all the way down. He's going to stand up one day in the sky. We find in our text he's going to stand up to break the seals. In verse number 7, he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And we find from chapter 6, verse 1, to chapter 8, verse number 1, he breaks the seven seals. And each one of them contains the wrath of God that is poured off on this world to prove to this world how wicked they are and to prove that the Antichrist is just as wicked. Mm -mm. the wrath of God will be poured out on this world the only hope is whatever means God has during the tribulation for people to come to him the Bible says in, in, in Revelation 7 I believe it is there's a great number that no man can number and there's 144,000 Jews that will come out of the great tribulation period who did not take of the mark of the beast who did not trust in the antichrist but can I say the rest of them boogers are going to suffer the wrath of God and those other people are going to live through it Might as well say this, well, I've made some of you mad. Let's make you good and mad. That series of books that came out, Left Behind, if, you, if you've got that, pitch it. There's no hope for anybody that's heard the gospel once the rapture happens. Second Thessalonians tells us that God will bring strong delusion on them to where they'll believe a lie. If they won't accept Him by grace through faith now, there's no way that they'll endure the wrath that will come and endure not accepting the mark of the beast in order to be saved from their sins. 
you realize that when the Antichrist takes over, that you've got to take the mark of the beast to buy gas, to buy food, to have any economy at all. That means if you reject the mark of the beast, you're going to have to hunt for your food, you're going to have to steal gas, you're going to have to do everything in your power to live off the grid. You realize they track you everywhere you go right now? Hmm. Do you realize that that little thing you carry in your pocket that you call a phone that you never use it to call anybody on? Do you realize that that is controlling people? Hmm? You realize they know what you look at and what you what you what you search and all that, so therefore they gear everything on that phone to you to keep you using that thing. Hmm? Whatever you want to buy, there'll be 14 ads about it, whatever you look up. They control you. All you got to do is watch while you're going down the road how many people are driving a car looking at that thing. All you got to do is watch people walk down the street and they're looking at that thing. Huh? They have so sucked out the brains of people by controlling them with that thing. No such thing as common sense anymore. And by the way, in the media, there's no such thing as truth anymore. They tell you what they think you need to hear because they're already working for the Antichrist. He's about ready to be revealed, and that'll happen as soon as we're out of here. Hmm? You know, they're in control of everything. Hmm? The price of oil. It's another thing that Russia and China and the Middle East have decided to do is not produce any more oil the rest of the year. Where do you think gas prices are going to end up? Hmm? You see, there's a primary about ready to happen here, so they kind of went down. But you watch over summer. Anybody try to book a plane, plane ticket? But Sammy wanted me to come preach a revival for him over the summer. I told him I can't come. One, one ticket, 2400 bucks round trip. Hmm? That's another thing. That's just getting there. I'm just trying to tell you, they are controlling all this stuff and they're going to control you. I just caught a glimpse, of, and, and they've been doing this for years, cameras, you know, to, to watch people when they speed and all this kind of stuff. And all. They're installing some new ones up there in Cincinnati. Uh, they, they, they are watching you everywhere you go. There's cameras everywhere. Why do you think they want you to have electric cars? Can I say there's so much proof out there that it costs more for the carbon and the battery and the lithium and everything for that battery in that car than it ever does to produce gasoline for your, your, your gas car. You know why they want you on an electric car? Because you're going to go so far in them. Yeah. Hmm? It's all about control. You know what the virus was all about? Control. It's all about control. And when the Antichrist shows up, that's what he's going to do is control people. Now, he couldn't just come out of the blue and say, okay, all your freedoms are gone. So since 9-11, they've been taking our freedoms away a little bit more every year. Why do you think every night you hear of a shooting? Every night. Now, it don't have to happen in, in Cincinnati. If it happened in Detroit or if it happened in Atlanta or if it happened in a little small town in Oklahoma, you're going to hear of a shooting every night because guns are bad. You know why guns are bad? Because 400 million uh, guns are in America. They cannot control America while Americans have guns. So they're going to outlaw guns at some point, and then they're going to come looking for them. If you don't give them over, you're an outlaw. Hmm? You say, we have the Second Amendment. We have a whole lot of laws on the books that they have ignored the last 10 years. I'm just telling you, friends, the Lord's coming. You better be ready. One last thing that I find where he stands up. He stands up for the saints. 1 John 2, 1. My little children, these things write unto you that sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Every time the devil goes to accuse us, the lamb stands up. He says, Father, they're engraved in the palm of my hand. The Father says, justifies as if they never sin." But he stands up for you and I. And not only when we sin, not only when we accuse, but when we cry, Abba, Father, he stands up. 
for you and I because he cares for us. We had Ella today finally convinced Christian and Taya that they could go somewhere without her. And, you know, we raised three, and Mama is a nurse, and I do know a little bit about prayer. If they left her with us, we, we could probably handle it, so they did. And probably more than half the time, I was holding her. You know, when that little booger was in my arms, she didn't have a care anymore, and she has a care right now in Mama's arms. She's not fretting. She's not worried about where her next meal come from. She's not worried about having a roof over her head. She's not worried about shoes on her feet. She's not even worried if she gets a bad, dirty diaper that it's not going to be taken care of. She just is fine. If you and I would ever learn that our Heavenly Father knows so much better how to take care of us than we can ever imagine. Look, little Elizabeth don't have a care in her work. Look at her. She looks like most Baptists. She's sleeping during preaching. Look at her. She's swaddled in a nice warm blanket. Mama's got her. She knows if something happens and Mama passes out, Daddy's there, big sisters are there. She's okay. So why in the world do we fret when we got a lamb who stands at every whimper and every cry? Why don't we learn that our, lands, our lamb stands up? Hmm? He stands for the saints. He stands for you and I. Many times wanting to help, but we don't ask for it. So many times I want to hold that baby, but they don't call me and say, well, you want to come and hold the baby? Huh? You are bad parents. <laughs> He's got to go back to work tomorrow. I got a feeling Taya's going to be calling. Hmm. No, she's a good mom. But how much more will the Lord do for us? if we just learn he's standing he's standing for us he wants to help us but until you ask him he won't force himself on you as much as I want to go over there every day I don't because they don't ask me to the Lord wants to help us but as long as we're willing to try and handle it ourselves he'll let us It'd be so much better if we just learned to say, Lord, before you even get it out, he's on the scene. And he can only be on the scene that quick if he's already standing for us. He stood up. Revelation chapter 5 has so much in it. I like what happens when we begin at the end of the chapter singing and praising and crying out and we fall on our face before him. We do that because he stood for us. And because he stood for us, we can truly worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me ask you this. When was the last time the lamb was your lamb? I'm not talking about being saved. I'm talking about you just was in his arms and knew everything's going to be all right. They both said, she still smells like me. That ought to be said about every one of us. We just smell like him. Because we've been in his arms. I wonder, how long has it really been? The preacher, we was in revival last week. Yeah, but did you get to the lamb? Hmm? Huh? Huh? Do you smell like him? Huh? Well, I promise you, once they wash her off tonight, it ain't going to smell like me. So I got to go back over there tomorrow. Huh? But you see, every day we ought to spend some time in his arms so folks can tell we've been with the Lamb. You might be here tonight, you might not be saved. Everything I said that he did, he did for you so you could be saved. You can be saved tonight. He stood for us so many times. But when was the last time you just thanked him? 
When was the last time you told him, we love you because you first loved us? When was the last time you really let him know how much he means to you? Hmm? Listen, my children don't have to tell me they love me every day. I know they love me. I don't have to tell them I love them every day. They know I love them. But I still like to hear it. And I think they still like to hear it. And sometimes he just likes to hear it, even though he knows you love him. Sometimes he just wants to hear it. Just to know you're thinking about him and what he's done for you. I don't know. I just can't wait till Revelation chapter 5 gets here. I believe it's a whole lot closer than we, we really think it is. But I know one thing. When he stands on, up on the clouds, that trumpet blows, I'm ready to meet him. Are you? Can be. Hmm? I think too many of us, though, are going to be guilty, and I'm guilty, and I know a lot of us, if we're honest, we'd be guilty of what Brother Clint sang. we still got some secret places. It'd be a good thing tonight if you just let him have the key. Let him go in there and clean that up. You'll be ready to meet him. Let's all stand tonight. I don't know how an invitation should go after a message like this, but Brother Clint, why don't you come get a song? I'll tell you what, Brother Clint, get your guitar and sing that same song again, that secret place song. If God spoke to your heart, why don't you just come? Let him have his way. While he's already praying, he's getting his guitar. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Help us tonight to appreciate the Lamb. Thank you for all the times you've stood for us. Lord, I don't know how many times the devil's accused us, but every time you've stood for us. Father, help somebody here tonight. And God, if anybody's lost, I pray you'd save them tonight. Help them to step out and realize you're already standing, pleading for them. Lord, bless Brother Clint as he sings this song. Speak to hearts. Well, thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen. Just so Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.